Welcome to Know Thyself, a learning hub. Today, we are back with a video on frequently asked topics in competitive exams, which is very important for all job aspirants. Today's topic for the video is National Human Rights Commission. There is a list of frequently asked questions in the examinations also at the end of the video. NHRC of India is an independent statutory body established on October 12, 1993 as per provisions of Protection of Human Rights Act, 1993, later amended in 2006. NHRC has celebrated its Silver Jubilee, 25 years, on October 12, 2018. Its headquarter is located in New Delhi. It is the watchdog of human rights in the country, i.e. the rights related to life, liberty, equality and dignity of the individual guaranteed by Indian constitution or embodied in the international covenants and enforceable by courts in India. It was established in conformity with the Paris Principles, adopted for the promotion and protection of human rights in Paris, October, 1991, and endorsed by the General Assembly of the United Nations on December 20, 1993. What are human rights? As per UN definition these rights are inherent to all human beings, regardless of race, sex, nationality, ethnicity, language, religion, or any other status. Human rights include the right to life and liberty, freedom from slavery and torture, freedom of opinion and expression, the right to work and education, and many more. These are entitled to everyone, without any discrimination. Background Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UDHR, was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on December 10, 1948. It is a milestone declaration in the history of human rights which sets out, for the first time, fundamental human rights to be universally protected. Human Rights Day is observed every year on December 10, which is the anniversary of the UDHR. In 2018, Human Rights Day marked the 70th anniversary of the declaration. In due time the growing importance of strengthening national human rights institutions has been recognized and in 1991, a UN meeting in Paris has developed a detailed set of principles i.e. Paris principles. These principles became the foundation for the establishment and operation of national human rights institutions. In pursuant to these principles, India has enacted the Protection of Human Rights Act, 1993, with a view to bring about greater accountability and strengthening of the human rights in the country. This act also authorized state governments to establish state human right commission. Structure of the commission. NHRC is a multi-member body which consists of a chairman and seven other members. Out of the seven members, three are ex officio member. President appoints the chairman and members of NHRC on recommendation of high-powered committee headed by prime minister. The chairperson and the members of the NHRC are appointed for five years or till the age of 70 years, whichever is earlier. They can be removed only on the charges of proved misbehavior or incapacity, if proved by an inquiry conducted by a Supreme Court judge. Commission also has five specialized divisions i.e. Law Division, Investigation Division, Policy Research and Programs Division, Training Division and Administration Division. The Chairman and the members of State Commission are appointed by the Governor in consultation with the Chief Minister, Home Minister, Speaker of Legislative Assembly and Leader of the Opposition in the State Legislative Assembly. Functions and powers of NHRC. NHRC investigates grievances regarding the violation of human rights either suomoto or after receiving a petition. It has the power to interfere in any judicial proceedings involving any allegation of violation of human rights. It can visit any jail or any other institution under the control of the state government to see the living conditions of the inmates and to make recommendations thereon. It can review the safeguards provided under the Constitution or any law for the protection of the human rights and can recommend appropriate remedial measures. NHRC undertakes and promotes research in the field of human rights. NHRC works to spread human rights literacy among various sections of society and promotes awareness of the safeguards available for the protection of these rights through publications, media, seminars and other means. The Commission takes an independent stand while providing opinions for the protection of human rights within the parlance of the Constitution or in law for the time being enforced. It has the powers of a civil court and can grant interim relief. It also has the authority to recommend payment of compensation or damages. NHRC credibility is duly reflected in large number of complaints received every year and the trust reposed in it by the citizens. It can recommend to both the central and state governments to take suitable steps to prevent the violation of human rights.
it submits its annual report to the President of India who causes it to be laid before each House of Parliament. Limitations of NHRC NHRC does not have any mechanism of investigation. In majority cases, it asks the concerned central and state governments to investigate the cases of the violation of human rights. It has been termed as India's teasing illusion by Soli Sorabji, former Attorney General of India, due to its incapacity to render any practical relief to the aggrieved party. NHRC can only make recommendations, without the power to enforce decisions. Many times NHRC is viewed as post-retirement destinations for judges and bureaucrats with political affiliation moreover, inadequacy of funds also hamper its working. A large number of grievances go unaddressed because NHRC cannot investigate the complaint registered after one year of incident. Government often outrightly rejects recommendation of NHRC or there is partial compliance to these recommendations. State human rights commissions cannot call for information from the national government, which means that they are implicitly denied the power to investigate armed forces under national control. National Human Rights Commission powers related to violations of human rights by the armed forces have been largely restricted. Thank you. Stay tuned for more important and interesting topics for competitive exams. Please, like, share, and subscribe.